Hello. Hello. Hi, sir. Yes, uh, my name is Dr. Hassan. I'm an emergency physician. Uh, can I have your name and level, please? Yeah, me, Dr. Hamid. I am junior doctor joining recently to your department. Nice to meet you, Dr. Yeah. Hamid. I have been told that today you came with a specific concern. You want to learn something? Yeah, yeah, right. Today, uh, in the trauma room, I have seen one new procedure, first time to see in my life. When I ask, they are telling this central line insertion. Okay. So I want to know more about that one. And do you have any experience before regarding no, central line? No, this is the line? first time, actually. So this is a very important topic. Yeah. So today we are going to teach you regarding the central line, uh, all the aspects, indication, contraindication, and other stuff. Okay. So uh, in between, if you have any question, please feel free to ask me. I will be more than happy to answer it. Okay. And at the end, I'm going to provide you with the leaflets, brochures, and you will find me in the emergency at any time, so we can demonstrate it together. And at the end, you'll be a professional on that. Okay. So do you have any idea about what is the indication for, for central line? No. no. So the indication for central line is we can use it as an emergency line access. If we don't have any line, we can use it also to give medication like an IV fluid, an antibiotic, also, sometimes we are using it for administration of highly concentrated drugs like potassium, like chemotherapeutics agents, and we can use it also to measure the CVP, which is central venous pressure. Sometimes we are using also for dialysis. So those considered to be an indication for central line. We have contraindication for which that if the patient is having infection at the site of the insertion, or if the patient is having deep venous thrombosis. Those, those considered to be a contraindication for the insertion of the central line. Okay. Can you repeat the contraindications for me, please? Yeah, this contraindication, as, I to, as you told, if patient had deep venous thrombosis yes. or, he, or he had some local infections. Right. So it is contraindicated Excellent. to insert. Excellent. Excellent. So sometimes while we are doing the procedure, some complications might, hap might happen. So like introduction of the infection or injury to the surrounding structures. So those are considered to be one of the complications. So how to prevent those complications? By using ultrasound guided, and we can use a septic technique as well, wearing our personal protective equipment and full sterilization of the area. So for the preparation, we need to inform the patient by the procedure in detail, and gain consent from the patient after full explanation. The procedure should be done in the resuscitation area with full equipment, freely ECG, and full monitoring. And also we need to prepare ourselves. So we have the equipment. So we have the central line. So this is the central line. You have here three lumens central line. Okay, sometimes came with two lumens, sometimes with more than three lumens, okay? With different sizes came. This is central line and this is called the guide wire. And this is an introducer needle. So at this level, we should be fully striled and checking our equipments before starting. So make sure that you have the needle, introducer needle, and this is called the dilator. So again, this is central line, this is introducer needle, and this is a guide wire, and this is a dilator, yeah. okay? So all equipment should be in a sterile fashion and we explain the procedure to the patient. Now we can start to have our local anesthesia as well. Check the validity of local anesthesia and calculate the dose. And then afterward, meanwhile, you can start to uh, have the site of the insertion. We have three sites of insertion of the central line. We can go through internal jugular, yeah. and we can go through subclavian and femoral. So we have for three approaches for the internal jugular, anterior, central, and posterior. And subclavian, we have inferior and infraclavicular and supraclavicular. Mm -hmm. And we have femoral line. For this purpose, I'm going to discuss with you the femoral line. The side of insertion is one centimeter below the inguinal ligament and one centimeter medial to the femoral artery. So you can use ultrasound guided to allocate your place. Full sterilization at this moment. We will start our procedure with giving the patient local anesthesia, give it time to take place. After that, you can use your ultrasound guided with a trial prop as well. Okay. And you can start to introduce your needle and while your eyes in the monitor, observing the needle itself, needle insertion. Needle insertion. So aspirating all the time. Once blood can come outside, mean, meaning you are inside, inside the vein. So immediately, gently, you are going to remove your syringe and you are going to introduce your 
guide, guide, guide wire through the needle. Once you can see here, there is marks. marks yeah. So up to this mark, once you reach the three marks, meaning you, ha you have to remove the plastic material and keep your hand on guide wire all the time, please, because it can slip and go inside. inside. Then remove your needle and you can dilate the track using the dilator. So insert the dilator. Once you come here, by twisting motion until you insert it all and then back. The reason for that, we need to insert the center line. So before starting, make sure that you flush the line and the old three looms are functioning. Mm -hmm. And then you will start to introduce your Cut center down. line Cut through down. the guide wire. Okay, make sure you close the three looms and you left the middle one open so the guide wire can come through the middle, the middle, right? the brown one. Yeah. Okay? Once you insert it and the guide wire is coming out, catch the guide wire before introducing the, okay. the catheter inside the body. And then you can remove your guide wire and then you have to secure it in place. After you secure it in place, you can use your syringe, aspirating blood, and then push back. Okay, so like this, you will make sure that three lumens are functioning. After that, you have to confirm the site that the center line is in place by using X-ray, if you are going through internal jugular or ultrasound, transverse and longitudinal uh, type. And then after that, you have to document this procedure in the note, size of center line and the center line can be, can be used. Do you have any more questions? Yeah, if after insertion, this central line, Yes. I have to keep for how long? Yes, okay, this is depend on the side. Uh, Usually for the femoral line, we'll just keep it for 24 hours, maximum 48 hours, okay? For the Ig and subclavian can be kept for, for longer. And you have to instruct your nurse for daily dressing and to stop using if there's any resistance or the center line is not functioning or swelling at the side. It is clear? Yeah, clear. Do you clear. have any more other questions? No, no more okay. questions. Okay, so next time you can demonstrate it together. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.